This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, 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 it's our lifestyle podcast, aka OLP, coming at you guys with another episode, this time episode 310. Thanks to everyone that continues to come back and rock with us every single week. We couldn't do it without you guys. We definitely wouldn't have the motivation without everybody out there supporting the cause of OLP. We've got a jam-packed episode this week, but I want to thank our title sponsors, including Custom Car Show Productions. They have three main events every March, Orange Beach Invasion. Uh, For next year, OBI is going to fall on the 24th, the 25th, and 26th of March. So depending on where you live in the country, kind of still spring break time, Orange Beach Invasion actually takes place in Orange Beach, Alabama at the Wharf. It's an amazing location. We hope that you'll come out and join us there. Their next event is Scraping the Coast, and Scraping the Coast takes place the 24th, or excuse me, the 23rd, 24th, 25th of June. That's in Biloxi. And then, of course, the weekend before Thanksgiving every year in Slidell, Louisiana, you have Bayou Showdown. So uh, three main events. And I know Keg Media is also involved with uh, Orange Beach Invasion. So I want to give a shout out to them as well. So join us at these events next year. We can't wait. So you, you guys know we continue to mix things up here at OLP. That's really important to us because... You know, being around seven plus years, things can get, you know, redundant. Things could potentially get boring, and we want to keep things fresh. And if you guys know me, you know I like a lot of different content, right? So old school BMX, minis, Lincolns, hip hop, technology, you name it. And this episode is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to announce the guest here in a couple of minutes. And um, we certainly appreciate uh, you guys always. Coming back to listen, even if you may not recognize one of the names, right? You might go, who's that? You know, uh, what's this episode going to be about? One thing I've always wanted to pride myself on is not always just having the big name guests on, right? Not always going after the big names. Now, granted, over the past seven plus, we've had a lot of great folks. And whenever OLP eventually comes to an end, I'm going to look back and say, man, the body of work that we put in to have so many legends, that's certainly important to me because those are a lot of uh, akin folk that I looked up to. But the essence of the podcast is also to promote the, the, you know, the guys and the ladies that not everybody knows their name, right? Because they have a story and we heard that last week. So certainly don't judge a podcast by the cover art, so to speak, and go, "Ah, I'm not going to listen this week. Or if they do, uh, a best of, you know, ah, I'm not going to listen because we always try to, you know, bake in even more content. So that's just kind of a PSA there. But episode 310, I have a gentleman on this week. Um, there's going to be a cool story that really ties into this. Uh, his name is Michael Gilbert Lopez. He's a photographer. And this crazy story of how he and I met online, not through a dating app. <laughs> oh, we met online through social media. He is friends with Daniel Jordan, who took the photos of Dr. Dre for the Chronic album. So that includes the the album uh, cover that uh, was paying homage to ZigZag, if you didn't know that. And, of course, what I refer to as the lowrider photo. He also took a few other headshots that uh, were used in, in what they call like press kits and kind of some of those press photos. I own one of those original ones that was sent out to the media back in Nine Deuce. But... Uh, I I just felt like, you know, one, I'd love to have Daniel Jordan on who took the photos. I did speak with him, and I think I mentioned that maybe last week. But I thought it was important, again, going back to what I said, not always having the big name on, uh, being able to sit down with uh, Mike or, or Michael Gilbert Lopez is important to me because he, he was really that missing puzzle piece that tied together the story how I was able to figure out where this album cover was shot. So not everybody may be into the pop culture stuff as much as I am, uh, whether it be hip-hop or just other stuff, right? My friend Sean at All About Los Angeles, he goes around not only now Los Angeles but everywhere, you know, replicating maybe where a famous photo or a famous movie scene took place. He's been everywhere from the West Coast 
Uh, he was just over at Alcatraz, my buddy Sean, and you know he's been over here doing some stuff. So I kind of dabble in that world a little bit, and because of Michael Gilbert Lopez, uh, he's at michaelgilbertlopez.com. Because of his efforts and his friendship with Daniel, I was able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. So I want to talk a little bit about that, and I want to have him on to give him his recognition for helping me, but also talk a little bit about what goes on in his world, and it's a little bit different guest for OLP. So that's who we have on the docket for this week. Now, I will say this. You guys have heard you know, the co-host, Miggity Mike, the mayor, a.k.a. Mike Murray, you don't hear him again. We're going to try to call this mother effer, okay? Uh, we have been, um, you know, I've been giving updates. You know, Mike has been ducking me, I think. And we're going to try to give him a call just in a little bit. Uh, I'm sure he's out gallivanting. And we'll see if we'll answer. And then we'll confront him and be like, yo, Mike, where the hell you been, dude? Okay? So let's not get Mike, the guest, uh, confused with Mike the co-host. So I'm talking about Mike, the co-host right now, but Michael Gilbert Lopez, his audio will be coming up. If you're a new listener or you're coming here, maybe your friends or family uh, with uh, Michael Gilbert Lopez, we appreciate you tuning in. We'd like to have a little bit of fun here. We'll have our normal banter kind of at the beginning with our intro, and then we'll roll into that title guest audio. Now the overview of this episode is brought to you by Hammered Weekend Wear. We tell you each week, if you want to pick up some mini truck or truck inspired clothing that uh, features real builds from our truck scene visit h-a-m-m-e-r-d weekendwear.com link up with them buy some stickers hats shirts hoodies tank tops you name it they've got it all Uh, i recently did and featured their two new uh pieces of apparel through our youtube channel kind of an unbagging if you will that's uh stay hammered and stay classy those two Really iconic pieces of artwork through Graphic Disorder that they recently launched. So big ups to Hammered Weekend Wear. All right, so the general updates. So I'm going to refer to Michael Gilbert Lopez as Vlog with Mike because that's that's how I found him. And again, I said I'm going to have him on this week. I did want to just do a, a reminder and say, please, if you can, check out our YouTube channel. We continue to grow. I continue to expand it. We have seen very good growth with our subscribers. We're well over a thousand out there, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, getting to five hundred or a hundred or let alone a thousand is not easy on YouTube, right? Uh, some people probably do it easier than others, but in this kind of time frame that we're in, it's not super easy to get to that number. So, for everybody that's clicked subscribe, we thank you. And I would ask that if you get a chance, go out there and look at one of our recent videos where I detail a little bit more of the story. Some I'll share here later with our title guest, Vlog with Mike. But uh, I I detail the story on how I um, figured out the chronic album cover location. So it helps us if you watch those all the way through. If you can, go out there and check it out. It is less than 30 minutes, so it's a little bit longer than some of the videos that I've been publishing But I think it's a cool story, and it kind of shows, I give the the behind-the-scenes and how we figure these things out sometimes. Uh, I certainly, you know, sometimes think about this stuff probably more than I should, right? Uh, Some are easier easier than others. Like with Warren G, I went out to the 21st and Lewis. That's where Regulate, the G-Funk era album cover was shot by Mike Miller Photo. And uh, it was cool to go to that exact place. I used to look at that album cover all the time, listening to that compact disc, Back in the day, it's still one I rock. Of course, a lot of times now, I'm not taking my CDs with me. I'm listening through Spotify or Apple Music. And um, yeah, so I say all that because if you get a chance, please just go out on our YouTube channel, Our Lifestyle Podcast, hit subscribe, watch some of the videos. If you're at work and you can maybe pull up an extra tab and just, you know, if you're listening to them, um, that helps us tremendously. Right now, we're on a mission to get to a point that we could make a couple of pennies from YouTube. And um, what you have to do for that is you have to have a thousand subscribers check Mark. Then you have to have 4,000 minutes watched. I think in a year, I don't know if that's a ro- a rolling or if it's just a, a cumulative, but uh, 4,000 minutes watched. And again, that's not as easy to get to because you know, you get all these subscribers and there's no guarantee that people are going to watch your videos all the way through um, and all of that stuff. So, if you can, watch our content on YouTube, and again, check out the Chronic 
album cover, you'll see that in one of our last videos. That's the only general update that I have for this week. I want to give a huge shout out to Joey at Get Decked. If you have artwork, a photo, or something that you want to put on a skate deck, especially with the holiday season coming, hit up Joey at Get Decked. That's the name of his company. It's Get Decked. Uh, if you go on Instagram and type in Get, you'll see Get underscore Decked VA. That stands for Virginia. Uh, hit up Joey. He is selling uh, his own shirts now. But uh, we primarily use Joey for his ability to put artwork on skate decks. And, you know, some of you are scratching your head going, why would I want to do that? Maybe you've got a son or daughter that's in the skating. Or maybe you just want to put your significant other's uh, car or truck on a skate deck to hang on the wall. Hit up Joey. He'll take care of you. Minimum quantity as low as one. Of course, he's doing a lot more than that for show promoters for them to grow uh, their merchandise side. All right, next we got the last episode recap. This one's quick. I just want to thank Mark Zitzer for coming on last week. We got a lot of good feedback. And again, it kind of reinforces that maybe you don't know all the names, but the stories are all there. So we got to tip our cap to Mark. If you haven't, go back and listen to that story. Uh, he got a lot of good feedback from it as well. So I want to thank him and uh, check it out. Last episode recap brought to you by Lone Star Throwdown. We'll be out at Lone Star Throwdown next year in Conroe, Texas, the 24th, the 25th, and 26th of February, the last weekend in February. Come on out. Although the registrations are sold out, you can still come in as a spectator. Have fun with us. It's the biggest, baddest truck show, in my opinion, in the world. All right, next we got trivia with Mike, and I'm going to try to call this mother effer. The word on the street is he got a new phone and he lost everyone's numbers. Now, come on. Really, Mike Murray? You have an iPhone. How are you not using iCloud? So I'm going to call this mother effer right now. Is this fucking Mike Murray? This is Mike Murray! Now listen, dude, we've been I've been trying to get a hold of you. There's all these someone told me you lost you broke your phone. And I, I was like, okay, I remember when Tom Brady had the invest going, the investigation back in the day, and the NFL tried to get his phone, and he crashes it on the, you know, he says he that's how he gets rid of his phones for Deflate Gate. He crashes his phone on the ground. That's like how I guess he, you know, he he gets rid of his phones really. And I'm thinking to myself, Mike, you really just lost everyone's numbers. You're not using the freaking iCloud. We, dude, I've been trying to get a hold of you, and everybody's talking about this beef, and Mike's gone, and I'm like, yeah, he's done, dude. Well, see, this is what happened. No, I don't want to hear the bullshit. They don't call me the gallivanting man for nothing, okay? Dude. So somehow, some way, hammering Hank got my address, showed up at my house, and said, Yo, gallivant man, let's go do some hurricane chasing. <laughs> so I'm like, bro, that's fucking awesome. So, bro. We've been hurricane chasing for like the last month, dog. And, the and then I don't believe it, but were you in one of those tank deals like from the movies and stuff? Bro, you don't understand, man. I don't know where Hank stole it. From. I mean, I don't know where Hank borrowed it from, but bro, this can thing was awesome. It looked like a damn army tank. I mean, it said Fort Bragg, Georgia on it for some reason. I don't know what that meant, but it was like, it was on the side of it, and, dude, we went right through those fucking hurricanes. And then he got, like, this plane, dog. Dude, we were just gallivanting all over the place, man. And I'm telling you, bro, we had no phone reception, dog. Oh, no on, phone man. reception. And then someone that was at the show last weekend told me that he bumped into Mike and his phone's been broken and you had some clamshell phone for, like, two weeks. And I was like, I don't know, man. It sounds fishy, man. And then here I am, left out to hang out the dry to do all these episodes. I mean, you're usually the one carrying some of the weight and stuff. And I'm like, dude, man, it's been five, six weeks. No call, no shows. I mean, dude, I had people SOS and me going dishonorable discharge, bro. Bro, man, it was gallivanting around the world with Hammer and Hank, dog. And we were hurricane chasing, dog. Bro, my iPhone 5S, dog, just couldn't keep up no more, man. I 
Sometimes I could charge it. Sometimes it wouldn't charge. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, dog, but we were gallivanting, man. Dude. Well, I heard um, someone that communicated to your, you know, Mrs. Mayor, Shannon, had said at least you guys' house was okay. So, listen, I mean, although I've been upset, I mean, I got to say, hey, I'm glad that your house, you know, you didn't lose that because I know a lot of people down there did. Bro, it was it was bad, man. It was real bad. It was bad on the coast. Luckily, we're not rich. But, dude, I do got to say, man, Hank took all my fucking clothes. I ain't got no clothes, dog. Hank took them all, man. So are, are you saying that we need to, you know, Dizzy, Don Dizzy Davis from uh, the Custom Scene Podcast and, of course, doing all his other stuff we had him on recently, should we, you know, he is moonlighting. As um, I don't want to say dog the bounty hunter, but he's moonlighting as a, as a bounty hunter. Should he put you know maybe kind of go after Hank or what? Bro, that dude is on the run again, and there's no telling where this guy's going. He said something about that he was going to go and hang out with with Ron for a while, and he was going to go hitchhiking all the way back to you know, Oregon. Dog, I I don't know. Hank. That's that's the last time that he talked to me. That's what he told me he was going to do. He said something about he was going to go see his girl, Georgia, because Georgia was down in, like, Missouri or something. Ah. And he was going to stop by, see her first, take care of some business, you know. Uh, uh, uh. And then he was going to go ahead and finish hitchhiking his way back to to uh, his boy, Ron. Well, I don't think – listen, we've had Georgia on. We named that one Georgia on my mind, right? It tied into the song. And listen, we know Georgia. She's not – she's not – you know, she's, she's already got a relationship going, so – I mean, he might think that, but listen, I'll tell you what, hitchhiking is underrated, dude. I mean, that is a way, I wouldn't condone, like, you'd have to be an adult to do it, but that's a way, like, if you want to go have a good, like, a good time and kind of just experience the world, hitchhike across the country, man. Bro, he, all he kept telling me was the three things that he learned from ODB no. was and Camel Joe. That's <laughs> no. all he told me. No. Dude camel joe he made a damn shirt and but this he had just like a plain white shirt and he said words to live by and it said quoted odb and camel joe's and dude he smokes in like three packs of camel joe's a day bro (laughs) bro you remember i sent you the hat and i told you i'm getting some of those hats made so do not well dude he had one he yeah. had one. He said he got it from you. Yep, I did. I had a couple made because you were making fun of them. Don't I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet on some of the things that we're going to be doing with the merch. But, I, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I know some of the listeners are probably going, man, this guy's a lunatic. But uh, meeting you, I, I just I really was, like, wondering what was going on. I was like, man, is it me? Is it Mike? Like, I thought, you know, if you lost numbers, you would have at least memorized mine by now. Well, bro, I, from what Hammer and Hank told me, that Dizzy Dunn took over, and he's the new mayor now. So I was like, fuck, all right, well, let's go, Hammer and Hank. Let's keep on fucking going, bro. Yeah, he had the tank. He said something about he had to take that, take that tank back because, uh, you know, he didn't sign it out or something. I don't even know what this – this guy is fucking crazy, bro. You know what he did tell me, though? He did let me in on a little secret, and he says that you're not like you say you are. Dude, come on, man. Listen, let's not be talking about bro, that. Bro, that's just what Hammer and Hank said, bro. Well, listen, all I can tell you is you kind of think you're back in the catbird seat, but you're not back yet because we've got to go, and, and i got to really kind of take all this in and see if we, I mean, dude, again, if you abandon your post and you're on the verge of a dishonorable discharge from the OLP podcast, I mean, dude, that's like HR material. You know what I mean? So I yeah, can't, you can't yeah. just show up. Like, I know you hang around Hank a lot, and you think you can just show up whenever you want, but, I I mean, I've got to send him, you know, I'm kind of your manager, if you will, right? I'm the content creator. i got to manage you. I can't can't just have you willy-nilly. My my, my iPhone 5S, dog, it finally started working, man, and and your number just happened to be the first one on it. So that's that's why I called in. Let me let you in on this secret. Whoever sold you that phone told you it was a 5S, Someone told me this past weekend, they go, Mike thinks he's got a 5S 4G Willy, but it's really the 3G iPhone 4, bro. Oh, dude. Yeah, so, dude, oh. 
you know those networks are getting shut down. So you better you 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 might as well take some of that money that you've been you know gallivanting around with and buy you a damn phone, man. Get you a cricket, bro. T-Mobile is sounding really good right now. They said they Hammer and Hanks got T-Mobile, and he says shit works awesome. And of course, he was talking to his girl Georgia why we're going through all these hurricanes. And shit never lost service, but he wouldn't let me use his phone. He said something about it's like a private, you know, private phone, private line, some shit. I don't know. He said something about bat phone. I don't know. This guy's crazy, bro. Uh, all he kept screaming out the damn window while why we were driving was Camel Joe's, bro. I don't This guy's crazy, man. And he kept he kept asking me about damn ODB. Where's ODB? He goes, that fucker knows how to party. And uh, and he's like, man, that fucker fucks all the bitches. Come and I'm on, like, man. bro. Come on. Beep, beep, I, beep, I don't know. Beep, beep. Well, listen, I don't know. Dude, listen, man, I am going to keep you on for another quick minute. We're going to have a guy this week, Michael Gilbert Lopez on. He's a photographer. He's the guy that linked me up. I know you haven't heard this story. You don't watch our YouTube, but he's the guy that linked me up with Daniel Jordan, who shot the photos for the Chronic album cover. And you know that's my number one album right there, the Chronic. Oh, I definitely know that. Absolutely. Nothing but an OLP thing, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 because ODB's down with the bitches. Two loked out podcasters going crazy. Dude, Hammer and Hank, he is he is fucking loco, loco, Listen, loco. Death Row is not the label that pays me, unfortunately. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, dude, I do have a quick question for you. Are you oh, ready, shit. Mike? Oh, shit. Here we go. Now it's time to get serious. <laughs> Dude, I know this is the most downloaded, most listened to. Dude, how did Dizzy do? I heard Dizzy killed it, bro, while he was on. Did he answer all the questions right? Dude, Dizzy flipped it on me, and, dude, I'm not making this up. He somehow pulled out a trivia question from the question I asked him, and it ended up tying into a director of Better Off Dead, and I was like, bro, my, my – you know, it's kind of hard to blow my mind. Dude, Dizzy – blew my mind you know what i mean i mean uh wow. the clean version of that you know the legal dude he is a talented man i don't care what anybody says i know he's from from tennessee and i know he probably sleeps with his cousins and shit but bro he's a talented motherfucker he's a dude. good dude man i mean mike you can't just come back here i mean dude you're you're using all this filthy language you're you're just very erratic dude so listen bro go. i've been hanging out with ha hammer and hank bro yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Please go see your doctor or something. Like, just level back out, because, dude, you even had me amped up for a minute. And the few listeners that we probably picked up this week for having a little bit different of an ep ep episode, I guarantee they've already unplugged, man. They've so already. We, uh, I apologize, bro. I, I I've been gone. I've been on the road chasing hurricanes, hurricane chasing, and man, that damn thing landed right in our backyard. And bro, we didn't have to drive too far, but dude, it was a hell of a party, man. That's all I can say. And that damn Hammer and Hank, bro, he, whoo, he's a party fucking animal right there. Whatever you do, don't take out, if you get the rental van, Mike, next time, to get the insurance, okay? Bro, we had the insurance, man. Them fuckers keep calling me, dog. Dude, we'll tell that story one day. But listen, this is the question. All right. This, this 1993 blockbuster, okay, was directed Ooh, blockbuster. By, by Steven Spielberg, okay? It was one of the biggest movies ever made and has spawned six movies. So so including this one, it was six. They just concluded the last one, which was like part of the second set. Okay? The only other hint that I'm going to give you is this long P word, paleontologists. Okay? Jesus Christ, So bro. Steven Spielberg's massive blockbuster came out June 11th, 1992. Three nine tray as Snoop said nine tray is, is the is a for me to f up sit and I hey you know that. my last four digits of my phone number is nineteen ninety three dude look at that bro are you are you dude, trying to, are you uh gonna be on you know, I, I didn't mention this last week but Snoop announced that him and Dre are working on a new album and you know the his first album was called Doggy Style what do you think the new album is gonna be called this isn't the trivia question but I'll give you bonus if you get it is it Cat Style. No, so what's the opposite of doggy style? 
uh, missionary. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's calling it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all the comments were, yeah, dog. All the comments Hell were blowing yeah. up, going, "Hey, he's getting too old. He's gonna do it, missionary." <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, that, don't that try to awesome. don't try to swerve us in Steven Spielberg's Uh-oh. massive blockbuster, massive June, June 11, 93, and it featured paleontologists. And one of the guy, uh, one of the other guys, was a mathematician. That was Ian Malcolm. Oh, okay, okay. Now again, well, that dude, was the first of six. But bro, check this out. Before I answer that question, bro, January thirteenth through the fifteenth, twenty twenty three, Eastbound don't Get know. Down. Go to EastboundGetDownShow dot nope. Pre register because going. guys, we're already halfway there. Nope. I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. We're going to cap it. We're going to cap it because I want to make sure I want to grow into this show. I don't, I don't, I don't. So we're going to be capping it. Go pre-register before it's too late. Get in. Guys, you don't want to miss Eastbound Get Down January 13th through the 15th. Destination Daytona. They're in Ormond Beach, Florida. Go check it out. Get pre-registered. Come out. Come out to Florida in January. ODB has guaranteed me that he's going to be there. So uh, you don't want to miss uh, good old ODB uh, there at Eastbound Get Down. And uh, so, hey, it's all good. I appreciate it. Appreciate you letting me spit that out. Answer the question, damn it. Or we're going to hold everything you said earlier in this podcast against you in the court of OLP. In the court of oh Jesus Christ! Bro. Yeah, now you're we, getting all... we got an HR department that's coming after you for a dishonorable, and we've got the court of OLP, which is part of the Airhead Nation, and they're going to come after you too. Not only are they coming after the Mazda, they're coming after you, bro, as a as a co-host. All right, so let's get back to 1993, and we got Steven Spielberg's no uh, Spielberg. What did I say, bro? Come on, dog. Dude, you must have been drinking or something, man. You sound like a freaking dude, like a lunatic. Well, when you first said, you know, 1993, but actually I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, man, that movie was before then. Oh, dude, there must be like a big old accident. I'm on my way home. There's freaking cops blocking the road. Looks like they're getting ready to make us all turn around. Hank. I think somebody, think somebody died up here. I'm being for real, dog. Oh. I'm on the road. That's they got the good. cops up here blocking the road. Yeah, it's not good up here. Something's going on. And, well, that's what I'm uh, saying. I hope nobody passed away. Hank is often known to – he goes what he calls it five stars in Grand Theft Auto from, from Hammer oh. Weekend Wear. That's who we talk oh, about okay. when we're talking about Hammer and Hank. I want everyone to know that's Hammer Weekend Wear and Hammer and Hank. Yeah, 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 definitely. But spit so it out, anyways, Mike, we got to drop so the you. First, all right, well, the first thing I thought about was E.T., because, dude, that was like his biggest blockbuster movie of all time was E.T., dog. 11 I watched years that movie pri- like 100. 11 years prior, bro. Where are you been? I, hey, man, my dates are a little, little woozy, oozy. But that when you said that, that was the first thing I thought of. And then I remember Steve, you know, then I remember him talking about, you know, like the movie It. And, you know, we got Halloween coming up. But I don't remember the first time that he brought that one out. You know, you're so, the, you're the guy. You're the guy that's got these dates on lock. So, so dude. listen. So I'm gonna here. I'm gonna give you a fun fact. Both movies were released. E.T. was also released on the same exact day of the year, June 11th. Okay. E.T. Wow. came out in 1982. This movie came out. Mike, do you remember what I said earlier? 1990. What you said? 1993. Yeah, because yeah. remember. 1993 is the same last four digits of my yeah. phone number. So, bro, I ain't going to forget that, dog. But I ain't going to lie, bro. And I know everybody's listening, and they're like, oh, it's blah, 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 so-and-so, so-and-so. Dude. I might not have, I might not even have seen this movie, bro. You know what I'm Dude. saying? Yeah, well, here's the thing. You've already, I think you're at now zero tick marks if you don't uh. get this one. So, you know, that means you have to start paying $100, and we're going to figure out what charity it's going to go to. So, for every wrong question... It's just going to be a hundred bones, man. Well, I tell you what, we might have to start saving up that hundred dollars, and um, and to get Hank out of jail because with him going cross country, there's no telling how many times he's going to get arrested. Dude, do you remember the TV show The Hitchhiker? The Hitchhiker, bro. <laughs> yeah, he, he he helped develop that move or that show. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, is there any truth that you're really? Dude, come on, we can't talk about that here, bro. We're trying to grow our listener base, man. All right, all right, all right. My bad, my bad, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know what movie it is. Dude. So go ahead and tell me. I'm wrong. Go ahead. Wah, and... wah. 
Do me the whammy. Dude, Jurassic Park, bro. Bro, fuck. I hate Jurassic Park, bro. Dude, that's dude. Seriously, man. That, that, don't don't be saying that on this podcast, dude. That dude, that's a blockbuster, man. That's one of my favorite movies. And for those bro, that don't know, if you look it up, Google it. There's a connection. Of course, Steven Spielberg directed it, and um, he helped uh, produce uh, the Goonies. There's a tie-in oh. to the um, to the outfits. What's the the wardrobe in in between Jurassic Park and the Goonies? So look that one up sometime. Bro, I've never been a fan of freaking dinosaurs, dude. So so listen, never bro, even watched dr- dr- never watched drunky. Jurassic Park. The only thing I've ever done about Jurassic Park was rode the Jurassic Park ride drunky. at freaking Universal Studios, bro. Listen, I'm not going to Eastbound and Get Down because if my Packers continue on this this losing streak, <laughs> I will be going. So 100, percent I know they're gonna if they dude they got the Jets next week. You know what I mean? So I really hope Aaron Rodgers can kind of come out of this slump. You know, maybe Devontae Adams wants to come back. You know, after well, pushing I don't that know, guy bro. down last night. That I was, was about horrible. to say he's pushing around ca- cameraman and shit. That's he the might way. be getting arrested. So. I'm going to be Who pushing knows? you around like that if you keep this up, drunkie. Oh, uh, bro. What do you th- what hey, do you got to hey, say Hammer now? and Hank. Hammer and Hank's going to take you out. You put hands on me. He, 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 you cannot touch his driver, bro. We put some serious miles in, and dude, we <laughs> brought the van back with no problems either. Wow. So I don't believe hey, it. Hammer and Hank tells me he was with you that night that the. No, no, no. And said it was your fault that we got damage to the van. Listen, we got people that are listening to this podcast that are listening to all, everything we're saying, and they're taking yep. it all back to the Fed, so we have to be careful, man. Uh, well, hey, the insurance supposedly has already paid for it now, so you can confess if it was you, bro, because, man, well, ha- Hammer and Hank's saying otherwise. Just remember the D word, the drunkie. I, I remember seeing him that night, too. Slamming stuff around. <laughs> I mean, you never know. So the trivia, the trivia with Mike brought to you by AccuAire. Visit AccuAire.com. The, the best air management system in the history of air management. It's A-C-C-U-Air, AccuAire.com. They also have merchandise, including those awesome air fresheners. If you go to AccuAire Life, you can submit your feature or your vehicle to be featured potentially. You can even give your Instagram handle and the photographer's Instagram handle AccuAir.com. Let them know OLP sent you. Mike, you got anything else, Drunky? Bro, I just want to say, hey, thanks for answering my phone, my phone call. I can't believe my iPhone S5. Remember S because that means it's super special. And, uh, bro, I just want to thank you for, for letting me back on, bro. No, that, it's that's... No, nothing's in stone yet, dude. Because LM, uh, well, LMC hey. and I have been negotiating the new contract. LMC oh, oh, okay. from lowest common denominator which is lcd their podcast we've been negotiating a deal and i told him i said look i don't got the Devonte adams money right i can't you know i'm not like the raid is but um i'm trying to get him over as the new co-host that way i don't have to deal with you know drunk boy calling here and there oh bro you know what though <laughs> it that would probably be the best because you know he's another one of those hillbillies and you got to be worried about you know if maybe he he like does something with his, you know what I'm saying? Come on. So Mike. I mean, dude, you're really run, running this in the ground, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. You just got to be careful. Guys well, from Kentucky, you know. So Mike, we're gonna these? go ahead and cut this short, dude. You do your dishonor. You're dishonoring <laughs> your position at OLP, man. <laughs> hey, it, it's been a pleasure. And guys, don't forget Eastbound Get Down. Nope. January 13th through the 15th, brother. It's not on the calendar yet. (laughs) Get the hell out of here, drunkie. Hey, Airhead Nation. Gallivant Man is out. Oh, my God. I apologize. I, ah, man, the show got really out of hand there. So, Mike is, I I don't know what his deal is this week. He sounds like a freaking lunatic. And um, that's not the normal banter we have. So, I definitely apologize. On behalf of OLP for the craziness, if you skip past that part, I do not blame you. I just hung up on Mike, so we'll have to see where that goes. But uh, the scene update. So I wanted to cover a few things here. Uh, I want to say not a lot to cover, but uh, I did save a couple of things. I tried to spend some time 
on social media this week. And here's what we kind of got. So I, what I do is I create a folder every week. And uh, there's a couple things. So a classic truck showdown. This one's kind of a show update, but I wanted to mention this. There's a deadline to get your vendor contract back. That's uh, Lonnie had posted that, and that's the new show for 2023 around the July time frame. Uh, it's basically the sister show to Lone Star Throwdown, and it's going to be called Classic Truck Throwdown. So uh, more on that coming in the future, but if you want to be a vendor at that event for July 2023, uh, touch base with Lonnie and them. I want to give a huge shout-out to Mini Trucker Cult Podcast. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. They gave us a huge shout-out, and they have their new episode 98, so congrats on nearing 100. And uh, this is goodbye, Colt, question mark. So I uh, can't wait to, to listen to that one. Uh, here was a cool thing. Uh, Adam Tripp mentioned that they went to Sparks in the Ozark 17, and they had a great time. I know Hammered Weekend Wear was out there, uh, DJ Mays and Diggity Dom, uh, and all of the great folks. So uh, pretty cool stuff there, and... Um, you know, I would encourage people, we don't cover every show here like I'd like to. Um, if you have a show that we haven't covered in the past or that you want to add to the calendar, uh, just send me a message or email us, ourlifestylepodcast at gmail.com. I would really appreciate that. And the last one was Zachary Quatrevink. I can't say it. Q-U-A-T-R-E-V-I-N-G-T. He posted a really badass Mazda. I guess it's his truck, man. The thing is amazing. I saved it. And I thought to myself, man, dude, that's that's a custom mini truck right there. So I wanted to give him a shout out. Now, I know there's not a lot of scene updates this week, but I also wanted to mention something I didn't uh, talk about when I was out there with Jeff at Devious Customs. He had sh- uh, showed me some photos of Craig Elder's uh, place, I guess where maybe he has a house or he has property. And if anybody has a connection to Craig, I'd love to get Craig Elder on. He's one of those that have been on our list for seven years. And I haven't quite found the exact person that can maybe make that contact with them. Uh, You know, I posted in the past, I've even hashtagged his name, Craig Elder. An amazing run with trucks and just different builds and and covers and features. and, And I posted some of those in the past. But uh, Jeff Davey had sh- uh, showed me some photos uh, of Craig Elder's uh, property, and he has, I'll call it like the Boneyard, some of those famous trucks he's built, they're still there. He still has them, you know, and, and they need to be kind of re maybe brought back up to speed and things like that, but I just thought it was insane. Uh, I mentioned that in a recent YouTube video, and someone said, hey, can you post the photos? And I thought to myself, well, if Jeff will share them with me, I'll try to maybe post them. It may not be something that Craig wants out there, so I don't know. I'll respect people's privacy over you know, the clickbait or things like that, but I'll see what I can do. Now, uh, last week, uh, there was a show in Tampa. It looked like people had a lot of fun. Uh, it seemed odd for me not to be there. You know, 25 years straight streak ended last year, but I can say this. Uh, good things must come to an end, and it felt fantastic to really just spend the time with my mom and you know, help her with the things that she has going on. Uh, I was able to not really have a crazy agenda. I had a bunch of stuff I had to do, but you know, I got up early and I did things that I had to on Saturday. That included going to one of my best friends. His brother passed away. I went to a celebration of life for him. Ironically enough, it was right in Land Lakes where they had the the service, if you will. And uh, it, it was odd because as a kid, that was one of the banks my parents would go to, um, and it, it, you know that's now a funeral home. But it was it's a very sad thing. The guy was very young, but you know those were some of the things. I know sometimes people scratch their head and they're like, "Well, where's ODB?" and you know this and that. But I've said time and time again, I really am, am committed and I'm focused to you know not only kind of my own mental health, uh, which. If anybody listened to that part earlier, I think we were all over the road there. But, uh, but also, you know, my mom's getting older. You know, it was the anniversary weekend of my dad uh, passing away. Actually, the day that I'm recording this right now is the fifth anniversary of the day my dad technically passed, and it's it's not easy, you know. And I know some people, you know, they go, "Man, you know, how do you do it?" and things like that. I mean, I don't always show my emotions on the outside, but. The thing is, is that, you know, I had important things I have to do. And for me, I've always said this, even with our club mates, the importance of, 
you know, somebody that can't make it to every show, I'm always okay with that because, you know, there, there's other priorities in life, you know. Um, not making it to every show versus being kind of a lump on a stump are two different things in my point, you know, in my po- mind because it's like, hey, you know, you can't be in a truck club and not go to a show for five years or not see you for five years unless you got something big going on. But certainly, you know, if you're involved with an organization, you go out there and you do the thing. And I've done that for 25 plus and, you know, it's kind of my time now to, to fall back and go, listen, I want to see these young bucks come up, some of the younger guys, some of the newer guys in our chapter, and do that kind of stuff. But for me, the past weekend was really kind of reflecting on helping my mom. We got a big list of stuff. My dad used to do it all at the house, you know, painting, doing this, tending to the big yard, uh, just just all of that stuff that my dad did. And I got to spend that time with my mom. Again, I went to my friends, the uh, celebration of life for, uh, you know, my, my friend's brother. And, uh, you know, that felt really good. Now, again, I did take advantage on Saturday, or excuse me, Friday night. I want to thank Negative Camber. They had invited me. Really, it wasn't anything formal. It was just, yo, Jay, what are you guys, what are you doing this weekend? And I was like, look, you know, I'm laying low. And they said, well, look, we're going to be getting together Friday. And I said, well, let me see what Severed's doing. And really nothing manifested with our chapter. I think they were doing stuff on Saturday night. And that was kind of going to be off. And I wasn't going to be able to do it. So on Friday, I kind of talked myself in after I said, no, I'm not going to go. Uh, Tom and Jay from NC, they invited me. We had dinner at Ford's Garage. We kind of hung out with a lot of the crew there. Uh, Some of us slid back to um, the Hotel Moto Holiday Inn. And uh, hit the Garden Inn, hung out a little bit, got to see Matt Middleton and Michelle. Uh, Howard was there. You know, some, some you know, mostly NC guys, but some, like me, not in NC, you know, like Howard and, and, and you know, Chuck Dog was there and just a lot of good people. So it was a good time, and it was, it was my way to kind of get out a little bit, but know that, you know, over the weekend I had more pressing, important things. So, you know, although that's maybe not the exact scene update that I typically cover, I did want to share that. Uh, it did look. Like people had fun, so I'm glad that people went out and did the damn thing. There were a couple shows going on, and uh, that's certainly uh, always fun. The scene updates brought to you by our family at Garage Gear Clothing. Visit garagegearclothing.com. They offer free shipping in the U.S. of A., and uh, they're the only brand that we know that does it, from kids' apparel to the ladies to, of course, the guys with sport trucks, minis, full sizes, even some kind of hot rod-themed shirts, garagegearclothing.com. Key show updates. This one's short this week, so again, I'm going to kind of fall back a little bit and not cover the shows every single week. We do this kind of as a courtesy, and we, um, you know, we don't we don't charge anything to cover or to to kind of go over these shows. I mean, we do this as a as what I call like a public service announcement. But what I will tell you is, uh, David and Kim DeCorver apparently swerved everyone in the scene. They announced earlier this year that Sparks in the Park was going bye-bye, right, after, what was it, five years. I saw the Corver on Friday night, David, that is, and David confirmed to me ahead of his post today on Facebook that, guess what, Sparks in the Park is going to be on and popping starting not next April, when it typically was, but it's going to be actually in September. So September of 2023, Apparently, from what I saw, it's going to be the same bat, not the same bat time, but the same bat location up there in the Panhandle. So if you can pencil that one in for next September, uh, please do so. David DeCorver will have more information to share, and I did want to mention that. That's the one big update that I had. The Key Show Updates is brought to you by the West Coast Influence. If you go to Mini Truck Film. Dot com. You can buy this Blu-ray or DVD. It is kind of a documentary-style film, if you will, about the mini truck scene. Minitruckfilm.com and order the West Coast Influence today. It makes a great stocking stuffer or a gift for yourself. Next, we got the podcast updates. Really not much to share here. We did get all of the merchandise shipped out, except for I did mention last week, the skate decks. So bear with us. I know we did sell some of those. Uh, We're working on that. And if you're someone that wants to get some skate decks and maybe pick them up at Lone Star Throwdown, or if I do end up going to Eastbound Get Down, let me know. We can work something out ahead of time. We can waive the shipping charge 
sometimes uh, if we can if we can meet you at a show. So hit us up, uh, send me a direct message or email our lifestyle podcast at gmail.com. That's the only update that I have this week from a podcast update perspective. And I want to thank Graphics Mafia. If you need stickers for your business or you need to replicate maybe an old sticker, they can do it. G-R-A-P-H-I-X-Mafia.com. Hit them up. Buddy or Ryan, they will take care of you. Good people. It's Graphics Mafia. Okay, and then last, the Airhead Nation. I don't know if this guy listens. Uh, I have him on my Facebook. I know he, uh, I believe he's an acrophobia. It's Burt Davis. He says, after losing a son, 1.5 years of 24-7 extreme pain, trying to figure out what was wrong, finding cancer, battling it for a solid year, uh, losing my 21-year marriage and everything I have worked for in my life, I can stand here and honestly say I'm happier and healthier than I've ever been. I, I have three amazing living kids, one about to make me a grandpa, one about to get married, and one more disciplined and focused in life and success than anyone I've ever seen. So he kind of goes on to talk about owning a small business and things like that. Uh, he talked about a five-month physical transformation, 160 pounds, and three days after death with a tube to breathe it out. Today he's 205 pounds and still smiling. Looks like he's in great shape. So uh, Bert, congratulations. I mean, what a, a crazy mindset you have to have to be able to kind of get back on your feet, so to speak. And uh, it's not easy. And I mean, crazy mindset as in determined. And, um, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I mean, it's inspiration to, to a lot of other people, uh, that are going through challenging things like many people are today. So Bert Davis, this airhead nation is, goes out to you. So, um, keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep inspiring people. The airhead nation updates this week are brought to you by CNS metalworks. Okay. CNS metalworks, also known as CS metalworks. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram as well, CS Metalworks. If you need air suspension, maybe some AccuAir, maybe Universal Air, hit up CNS Metalworks. Again, you can send them a, a direct message. They have um, a Facebook page and they have Instagram. And uh, get with Chris and team. They will take care of you. And again, when I reached out to him to buy my Universal Air products, I was super stoked. I couldn't thank him enough. Uh, for how easy he made the process. I told him what I needed. He ordered the stuff. And you got to remember, a lot of these companies don't sell direct to public. So you can get with someone like Chris at CS or CNS Metalworks, and they'll take care of you. So again, as I wind it down, I want to apologize. I know earlier we got a little sideways. Um, I tried calling Mike. Then he ended up calling me back. I wasn't sure how that conversation was going to go. He sounded like he was drinking. I don't know if he really was or if he's just kind of playing but he had me fooled regardless. But listen, everyone, we appreciate all the support. Uh, trust me, go back and listen to the other episodes. Number one, Mike hasn't been on recently. Number two, they're not that crazy, I promise you. Uh, I hope that you guys stay and listen to the rest of the episode. And again, I got to thank our guest uh, so much for coming on. Uh, shout out to the big homie, Michael Gilbert Lopez. He's got michaelgilbertlopez.com is his photography uh, page. Check it out. And uh, look forward to learning more about him now. We'll hit you guys next week, Lord willing, with another episode. Stay on the rise. We got you. Hey, hey, as I mentioned, I'm so excited to sit down with someone I recently met uh, through social media. And uh, I couldn't be happier to be sitting down here with Michael Gilbert Lopez. Mike, thanks so much for taking the time. Hey man, I, I appreciate you uh, having me on. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate that you actually watched my vlog to find, <laughs> yeah, to find me and Daniel, <laughs> dude, for for sure. And man, I can't wait to talk about it. I do want to just, as I said earlier uh, in the podcast, I do want to just kind of drop this hint that uh, Michael and I met through YouTube, and there's kind of a little story behind that. But before we get to it, we got to tease that a little bit. Um, Mike, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Cause you know, our listeners, we talk a lot about mini trucks, old school BMX, hip hop a little bit, but I'd like for people to kind of know uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I was born in Pasadena, California. Um, I, and I moved to Bakersfield, California when I was about 12 years old. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of been here ever since. And, um, 
I started out in web development and, and which eventually led me through graphic design, which then eventually led me to photography. And ultimately, uh, that's what I've been doing the last, I don't know, 15, 17 years uh, between that and video work and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of a creative and I, I just recently started a, a new golf company. And so I, I've been wow. busy doing that. So, you know, I've been playing golf, taking photos, just enjoying my life. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's amazing. I mean, to me, like when you can dabble in a lot of stuff uh, as content creators, you know how important that is. And what's crazy yeah. to me is like we've often talked about on, on our podcast here about how like a lot of us mini truckers, we came from BMX and skateboarding, right? And yeah. they kind of combined and we became teenagers and we got mini trucks. But what I've always noticed in my friend Brian at Grinder TV, he does a lot of um, kind of automotive films, he calls them. Something that I've noticed is like photographers, they often, they're kind of like, um, I think of Sean White. Sean White was really good at snowboarding, yeah. but he could skateboard, right? Yeah. So like someone like yourself, like you, you're dabbling and you get good in photography and you understand these settings and all that. But then that kind of bleeds over and then it, it seems like the sister to that is uh, video stuff. So is that kind of how you got into the video stuff? Yeah. So, and, and I got into the video stuff. I, I had been, I've been shooting, I've been blogging since before vlogging was even blogging. Like, right, right, right. Uh, like this is back in the nineties when I had a little, you know, high camera, you know, little, uh -huh. you know, you know what I'm saying? So, yep. and I would, I, I would record myself going around town talking about stuff. Wow. So it was, it was kind of like vlogging back then. And so kind of always been in this, this creative thing. And, uh, you know, in 2004, when it, the reason why I even got into photography was because I, um, I, I was an art director for an, advertising agency and we had to hire this photographer uh -huh. and this guy was just a you know i hate to say it, he was just an asshole uh -huh. and i was like well i'm gonna go get a camera i'll do this myself and then i realized how hard it was and that's ultimately how i ended up meeting daniel was because really? yeah we were at church and so what happened was i'd bring my camera everywhere i went and i'd be i'd film you know i'd take photos at church i'd take photos like wherever, and Daniel, um, Daniel was a uh, the guitarist in the band, mm -hmm. so he played the guitar, you know. And one day, I, I mean, I don't, I, I guess I don't know, maybe I'm getting a little ahead no, here, but no. uh, so one day, Daniel, um, after church, he goes, he goes, yeah, man, I, I used to be a commercial photographer back in the day, and I said, what, really? Oh man, and and back then, you you know you. Back then, in the early 2000s, you didn't. You, you might have asked for a website, but but you always knew anybody who worked in the 90s or 80s. They always had a book. So right. I, 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 hey, you know, you got a book. He's like, yeah, I'll bring it next week. I said, oh, great. So the the following week comes. He comes to church. Church ends. I go to I go with him to his car. He pops the trunk. He goes, yeah, here's my book. And I open it and I'm like, yo, that's that's Sharon Stone. I'm like, yo, that's Snoop. I'm like, hey. So this is Dr. Like, what are you not telling me here? Right. Yeah, this is like, yo, this is Dr. Dre. What, what is this? He's like, yeah, I took these photos. And wow. I was like, shut up. No way. Like, you know, like, like, you know, like, because it like the, the Chronic album, like, like it's, it's, it's classic. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is, it is, it is a piece of art. It's, it's a piece of art form. And I mean, okay, I'm like really into music, right? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. I, and I got a friend. And you remind me of my my good friend who, who's an audio engineer, right? And when we talk about the Chronic album, we don't just talk about the just the lyrics or the beats, but we talk about it sonically. Sonically, yes, that's the word that comes to mind. Yeah, sonically, that album, and it, and they touched on this even in the the movie when when the the, the guy who's playing Jimmy Iv talked about yeah, who mixed this, yeah who mixed this album, you know, like. And sonically, that record just it, it nothing today can it even sonically sounds like that. Yeah. And and the second that record comes on, like you're like, yo, that's Dre. Like I, I just yep. you know, and, and that's Dre, that's Dre's signature. Signature, right? Yep. And so so you know, when Daniel's sitting there showing me these photos, I'm like, yeah. 
Oh. You're like, I know the guy now that did this? I know the guy that knows the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's funny because every time I, so in my office, in my office, I have a lot of artwork and records and, and the chronic album is one of them. And so anyone who ever comes in my house, I always point them to their record. And if Daniel's in the, you know, if Daniel's at my house at one of my events, yeah. I will, you know, I, I, I kind of embarrass him because he's a really <laughs> humble guy. Right, but right. he'll be in the office and there'll be like 10 people. And I go, yo, you guys see the chronic album right here? Yeah. Yo, this is the man that took the photo. <laughs> Same thing I would show do. Show some respect. You know, right, I'm like, right. show some respect. And I walk out, you know. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I was just blown away that he was the guy that took this photograph. And then as, and then he and I became friends. And then not only we became friends, he became my mentor and he really taught me how to really, you know, use light and see it. And and it's so funny because, you know, like that, the, the vlog that you saw me, that you saw Daniel in at the time, what I was doing, I was vlogging every day. I, uh-huh. I had just lost, I had just lost my mother to cancer. And so every day I had to turn life into like this little mini movie. And so he just happened to come over because I was telling him about this, this book called contact time and had all these. Yes. I saw it in there. Yep. Yeah. And so I was in New York and they had his work up in this gallery in New York, you know, and I was telling him, I was like, yo bro, like your work is right here. Like, here it is. Like, you know, like, and so he came over to see the book and, and whatnot. And and that's why I just titled it like, yo, because it was just like, yo, tell the story. Like, he's never really been on camera. He's never really told the story. Matter of fact, nobody, I, I would say that nobody in, in in the little town of Bakersfield, we're not a little town, you know, we're pretty, you know, pretty big now. But, like, it, it, you could walk by him and you'd have no clue that, like, yo, that was the guy that, that crafted this you know these photographs especially Mm. and you know you talk about okay so you talk about sonically right you know dr dre's signature right yep okay so every photographer has their signature and i don't know if you noticed this but i noted i knew it was daniel that took these photos because there's two things there's this one major thing that daniel does and if you look at the album cover with dre you know it's just a studio backdrop right it's just there's nothing spectacular about it, right? The lighting, the lighting is perfect, though. Because yes, it is. I know how Daniel lights. I know that shadow that he put on on the on the one side. Like I, I know how he does that. He taught me how to do this, right? So wow. I understand what he did. But what ties that studio photo to the to the liner photo? You want to know what ties those two photos together? The lighting. Uh, the one. The one. Not only the lighting. And you know, and I'm referring to the 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 one where where Dre sitting on the lowrider. Oh, the right, Apollo. right, right. Okay, what ties those two photos together? And it's very subtle, but Daniel does this thing where he slightly tilts the camera to the left. Not a lot. It's just a very uh. slight tilt. And if you look at the lowrider shot, you can clearly tell that that building is not straight. It is leaning slightly right, to right. the left. Right, right, right. His, that is his signature on how he takes That's photographs. Sick. Yeah, that is. And, sick. and you can look at the you can look at the studio photo, and you can tell that Dr. Dre he's not tilting his head. The camera is slightly tilted. Ah, right. Yeah, because I always thought like it just it, you. Always, I always would look at it and say, oh, he's got his head cocked a little bit. But to your point, it's just that the art of the photographer. Yes, that is his thing. He Daniel took a. A headshot of me, like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And in the photo, you clearly see my head is slightly tilted to the left. It's this little subtle thing that he does that kind of just changes the 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 look and the feeling of the photograph. And so that's how that's how I know, like, oh, oh yeah, Daniel took that photo. And especially how he's, even on the Impala, how he's sitting, mm-hmm. how that front wheel is slightly turned yes. in, just slightly. Like, those are details that Daniel thinks about, and he, you know, he said he well, he had like ten minutes, so he's yeah. thinking fast, right? And not only that, but even on that Impala photograph, where he placed Dr. Dre, he placed Dr. Dre in the perfect 
location of where you could place him in that environment because he's in between the pole and he's in between the building. Yes. So now there's this solid color of light that's behind him. And as photographers and as Daniel knows, there's this is how the human eye works. We look for faces and we look for the brightest thing in the scene. And Dr. Dre's face is in that bright scene, yeah. which automatically makes you go straight to his face. And then the rest of it carries down. And then you look down, yep. but you go straight to his face and you look down. And that's just, that's what Daniel does, you know? So that's amazing. Yeah. And the other cool thing too, that, that always struck me was if you think about how it was so odd because when I, there's a whole other story where I had met this guy that kind of worked in the industry a little bit and worked with Dre back then. But when I, so, so the next, what was it er, earlier that day, I went to the location and I was telling this guy. And, um, so, so I was talking with him and he, I was explaining that I went to the location and he goes, but he goes, yo, the, the chronic, he goes, it was the, the, it was white on the front and back. Right. I go, yeah, but remember the low rider, the, you know, I call it the linear sleeve, right. Or that you pull out mm -hmm. and he goes, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I go that, I said that location. And he was like, damn, like, and he, uh, uh, Kevin, Kevin Donan is his name. And mm -hmm. it, it was cool because, you know, like when you look at this album cover, it's not one, like I kind of said in my YouTube video, it's not one that you, like a lot of us go to try to replicate some of these Beastie Boys and all that. This one was different because you have the studio headshot, but then on the inside, to me, like really that could have been the artwork cover. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't go with the zigzag theme. Yeah. So. And, and and what's crazy is, so Daniel, you know, and he'll, he'll tell you more about this, yeah, but you know. it's more of the backstory of how, um, of how that, how he even gotten, you know, Linked how up even Dr. Stuff. Drake found him, right? Like yep. the, the reason behind it. And then even some of the other concepts that they shot, I've seen some of the other concepts. That's sick. And he made, he like, hinted like, to that. I mean, sorry. He hinted to some of this on the phone with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and what's even crazy is like last year he gave me a signed copy. So I have a Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg deep cover no photo way. book back in the 90s and it is it is so daniel jordan i i gotta i gotta send you over a, a, a copy yeah like a photo over something yeah or, yeah, I, yeah. Gotta, I gotta send you a photo of this but this photo is like so amazing because it's dre and snoop and the way he photographed it he he made it look like they were in some building but they're not in a building they're just against a a, a wall but it looks like it looks like light coming through a window and it's just, it's, it's a super dope photo. And, and I have a copy of it up in my, I have it hanging up in, in my office and uh, yeah, I got to, I got to send you a copy of that so you can see it. Uh, it's just amazing. And uh, so, you know, I, he's been a mentor and he's been a friend and uh, now he's my, my golfing buddy too. So, Hell yeah. Um, Heck yeah. but he's, but he's, you know, he's super humble. Um, he's super, he, he, he really cares about his work. And, and I'll say this, like the deep cover song, for those that didn't know, last week I kind of asked a trivia question, and I said, what was the first commercial Snoop Dogg and Dre song? A lot of people think nothing but a G thing. Deep cover, that song come out, released April 9th, 92. I yeah. went, I was one of the people that paid. Back in those days, you'll remember, CDs were, were kind of expensive. They're like, here in Florida, easily seventeen ninety nine For that soundtrack, I went... I remember the Blockbuster Music, or it might have been Warehouse at the time, and I paid like seventeen, eighteen dollars. It wasn't cheap, but I wanted that one song. It had a Shabba Rank song on it too, but we all wanted it for deep cover. And the ironic thing about that too is, all these years, I think the the record company is Solar. Uh, some will remember that they own the rights to that. So even though, you know, with this this recent acquisition that Snoop and you know all that's a whole other deal. But this that song was never available for streaming, and and people love that song. So a little bit of history, though, you know, for some of the listeners there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, but da but Daniel, you know, D Daniel's just a real um, chill humble. guy. Yeah, chill, humble, yeah. chill, humble guy. And um, you know, he, he's like I said, he's he's been a great mentor, and uh, I, my whole photographic style. Uh, you know, if you were to look at Daniel's work and look at my work, you can see where he is, you know, completely influenced, you know, my work. And uh, so I, I've always been appreciative of him. And, you know, I've always wanted him to, um, you know, 
get his his accolades because ultimately, you know, although people may look at that, the, the cover and go, oh, well, that's just a simple studio shot. And I would go, well, you don't know how to you don't know how to craft that light like that, like the way he does. And and but even more so, I would even say that he was there to document it. Yeah. Yeah. And think about this. I, I kind of said this in my YouTube video that the mind blowing thing to me is like, you could argue the one eight seven deep cover song, you know, kicks off the relationship commercially with Dre and Snoop. But think about it. Death row records, whether people like it or, you know, not, or, you know, not everyone's into the gangster rap and all that. I mean, listen, everyone loves California love and all these songs. Right. But the thing that's mind blowing to me is really the chronic other than, you know, nothing but a G thing coming out as a single shortly before, but on 12, 15 of nine deuce, right. in 92, this album kicks off arguably one of the greatest hip hop, you know, runs of all time. You know what I mean? Like just hit after hit and Dre coming off a of ruthless. I mean, dude, for Daniel to take the photos again, that is like a tip of the cap to him, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it, it's just part of, it's part of the history. You know, there, there was, there's a lot of great photographers who were documenting hip hop in those, in the early, in the, in the eighties and the nineties. Um, uh, you know, um, but you know, to, to say that, you know, you got one of the photos, one of the photos of one of the most recognized hip hop albums, like, like, you know, that's something to be proud of. Like, you know, regardless of how easy it was or it wasn't the fact that someone trusted you to take the photo. Yeah, for you know? <laughs> sure. And what was cool is I went to the location on Thursday. That was like one of my like five or 10 things I had to do. And then on Friday, Daniel reached out to me, you know, after you connected us. So I want to thank you. He called me. I was getting ready to take a restroom break. Uh, he goes, hit me up later. We ended up talking to him kind of later in the evening. And his wife was there. And we, we, we talked for over 30 minutes. And it was really cool because, you know, he, you know, like I told him, I said, look, I'm not going to blow your phone up or anything like that. And he goes, no, no. Like, and he was humble to, to go, yo, man, this guy's really into it. Like, I want to talk to him. And he gave me some of those, like, little um, – nuggets i'll call them but he also i tried to give him some nuggets and i was like yo listen man i i don't know you're not big on social media i get it but i was like look this this 30th anniversary is coming man like you if you do have anything or stories and that's when he said yo i'm gonna get with mike and do some stuff I, i'm all for that because dude like you know not that he's looking for the recognition but you guys definitely have some stuff to talk about and it sounds like he's got some things and i gave him some hints i go yo man do some of this and i'll be the first guy to buy it you know what i mean so. Yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, I think a, a couple years ago, a few years ago, um, a magazine out of China or Japan. Yeah, he told me someone had reached out to him. Yeah, he did a whole. Yeah, he did a whole a whole article in. Uh, it was in China somewhere, uh, Japan. I can't remember exactly where. I remember he showed it to me. They they called him. They interviewed him. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, so I, you know, he, super nice guy super humble um a hell of an artist just just a just a he's just an artist you know i i, I and and he's meticulous and i know that when he photographed Dre, he was meticulous that the light had to be at the right angle dre's head had to be at the right like he's meticulous but he can do it really fast and really well really yeah, to quick. value people's time and stuff that's that's amazing I want to talk yeah. more about the subject. So here's something cool. So, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people from California because in the mini truck world, you know, kind of coming out of the 70s and the 80s and, you know, just an amazing car culture, as you know, there and stuff. When you were younger, Michael, were you into like BMX and skateboarding was like, what was the culture stuff that you were into kind of growing up? Um, I, I was into BMX. I did, you know, I did try to do the BMX thing, uh, except when it came down to going down the hill and going over the first ramp, <laughs> I realized, yeah, that's, that's just not my thing. Right, so right. I was more into, uh, definitely into basketball. That was, that's always been my sport, you know, and, oh, uh, just re I picked up playing golf now. So now I'm hooked on golf and, uh, but, uh, you know, um, you know, typical California, you know, love going to the beach. Um, Love going to Venice Beach. Love playing basketball at Venice Beach. That was that, that has always been my thing, and 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 it's still like my 
my, always my kind of like my, my number one love of things but but music i've always loved music um i've always you know i'm 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 a i'm a big hip hop guy um i'm a big tupac fan uh, i'm definitely a big dre fan snoop um although you know i like a lot of east coast older east coast stuff too you know i just i just like i like great art i like great oh, music yeah. and yeah. uh you know, I, and I always, I always, I always like meeting people who are like really passionate about something, right? Because oh, yeah. like, you are like, you are like super passionate. I, you know, as I watched the videos and stuff, I was like, oh, yo, he, he like, <laughs> you really care about this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I do. I'm addicted. And then, and then even like when you were talking about trying to find the location of where he shot the photograph and the and the research that you did, I was like, oh man, he, yeah, he really went to to, you know, yeah, to he, the ends of the earth to find the information. <laughs> Though, and uh, it was cool because it reminds me of there's this Instagram account that I follow called The Band Was Here, okay. and this person, this person like shows the album cover or the photo in the location of yes. where it was shot at, you know. And so it's always cool because it's like, oh, this is where it was done at, you know. And and uh, you know, you just, sometimes you don't realize that, like, yo, like, like something that you that is a piece of art or, or a memory in your mind and you go, Oh shit. Like I'm really standing right here where, where it happened. You know, like it's, it's kind of mind blowing sometimes. So yeah, I just, uh, I appreciate what you do, man. And I uh, just keep going. I, I think it's like really cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. Here's something ironic I learned a few years ago when some of these social media guys started getting bigger with doing it. Like what you just mentioned, ice cubes, America's most wanted, right? Like mm -hmm. the backdrop, this is, and we should have mentioned this earlier, you know, stuff Daniel Jordan was doing and what these guys are doing is way long before Photoshop. You know, you and I know yeah. that. But the America's Most Wanted, it has like, okay, there's a there's a street in Compton, or a, there's a, excuse me, there's a uh, intersection in Los Angeles where that's the backdrop. But yeah. I learned um, through DJ Speed, which was real good friends with Easy. He lived with them for a while. And some of the guys in the lynch mob, they had mentioned how the photo that that is, almost looks like it's photoshopped with all the guys standing. The one guy's got the Jordan flight deal on. A lot uh -huh. of that, those photos were taken like in front of I think they said Ice Cube's mom's house, like on the grass. And okay, that was all kind of pieced together. So it's kind of that cool thing. It's like you can go to the intersection where the buildings are in the back. That's a famous Los Angeles deal. But it was crazy how that stuff kind of pulled together, and, and I just love learning all those little facts. The other thing that's cool, though, too, and I wasn't the first to do this, but a long, many years ago when I would post, like, an album for the anniversary, I would be like – because, you know, I looked at the notes, right? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, Daniel Jordan. And I would do my best to tag – those photographers and I love how a lot of guys do that now and now with some of these photographers you know they're releasing old photos unseen and that's what people love you know yeah 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 I mean man you know you know what it takes to create one great image you know um and, and, you know it's crazy so and, and I'll, this is another example of what you're talking about so uh, I have a friend who another friend who's a commercial photographer down in LA and so he had a grand opening a few years ago where he had the studio and it was it's right there on Highland and Sunset in Hollywood oh, wow. and you know the, the place has been there forever I think um, it used to be like a music studio back in the day and I think like um, I think Hendrix recorded there there's a lot of you know a lot of history there well, me and Daniel, we go to this opening, right? And we're, you know, we're, we're at this, in the, it's a photo studio. So, you know, we're just meeting people. And so we meet the guy who actually runs and manages the building and owns it or something like that. And he goes, well, come upstairs. I'll show you the, the archive room. I'm like, yeah, okay, wow. great. And so we go upstairs into this archive room. It's this huge room. And it's original slides of like NWA's album cover wow like like he owned all of these original negatives and he had them they were all in these drawers and i never forget me and daniel were like blown away Damn. at what we were looking at you know um um old original photos of hendrix so and then you could see like there, there he had contact sheets and you could see like what it took for them to get the one right photo you know like they had to go through a series of Okay, try this, try, you know, and you could see, and it was like, it was amazing. So, you know, uh, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, 
Mind Jay cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and a lot of that stuff, you know, places went out of business, or they're like, "Look, we need to. We don't have the storage." And I remember some of the magazines that we followed. Some of the people that worked at the magazine said, "Dude, I remember when we were throwing out um, slides and all of the 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 um, you know all of the original stuff because they were just throwing it in the dumpster." You know, so it's yeah. like sometimes you might have someone that comes in and goes, "Hey, man, take all the stuff, whatever," and then you find some gems. Yeah, D- there's a guy named Danny Hastings, I believe is how you say it. He's the guy that shot Raekwon, the chef's um, only built for Cuban links his album yeah. cover and he's yeah. every year on or around that anniversary he uh posts stuff about it but he's also done Nas stuff Jay Rue the Damager yeah. and a lot of guys and dude it's mind blowing when he shows the one Nas where Nas looks like a pharaoh on the cover yeah. he he yeah. shows how much work and he goes yo he goes this was not photoshop like and he shows the behind the scenes stuff so to me it's 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 iconic um you know that he also shot Wu-Tang and the 36 Chambers like those iconic photos, those guys were smart enough to know to like to keep their hands on their work, you know, because like you said earlier, it's their work. It's, yeah, it's their work, you know, keep, keeping their hands on it. And, you know, Daniel sent, sent me over some stuff the other day, um, and I'll let him share that with you. But he sent me some stuff over the other day with Dr. Dre that I've, n- I've never seen. I've never seen these photos. Yeah, right. I know. He said he's got he's got some gems. And I go, yo, I was I was kind of, uh, you know, rubbing my hands together, kind of Mr. Miyagi style going, yo, man. I was like, dude, you know, if you could release some of that stuff, you know, and I told him, again, you know, people, they, they like it. I've got one of the press photos that I got um, over the years, and it was, you know, the ones they used to send out back in the day. Now it's all digital, of course, but, you know, just those little things for fans, you know, if it's priced right or maybe it's autographed and it's a little bit more or whatever, but there, there there's a market for all that stuff. So, I, I mean, I wish him the all the best with whatever he ends up deciding, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna do something, you know, he's, he, he's, uh, I don't know. I guess he's, he's just been, he's yeah. been busy with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this was something I wanted to bring up too. So you mentioned Venice beach in my younger days. I went, um, my buddy and Joe and I, we went to the movies. We saw white men can't jump. Right. So yeah. now you fast forward all these years and you go, you know, the same stuff we're talking about with album covers and, and the whole, what we call pop culture, um, there's guys now, and I had the, there's a guy on YouTube, the '80s Life, um, might be '80s Life, but really good dude. His name's Kurt Crucial, which is a cool name, and he uh-huh. go, he does the, the the he lives in Los Angeles and he does the movie filming site locations, right? But here's the yeah. thing: you'd think like, okay, you, you go to a couple. That's what I would go to. I'd be like, okay, I'll go to a couple, dude. This guy's he just did the White Men Can't Jump. And he does every scene in the movie except for like two. And he goes, "You just can't figure out where these two are." And I'm going, "Dude, like you just blew my mind." You know, like the. Do you remember if you ever saw the movie where he he at towards the end he goes he he bets him again that he can't dunk, and they pull yeah. off on the side of the road in the Trans Am, and he, and he yeah. goes to the place where like the basketball hoop was at. I'm like, how do you figure this stuff out? It's mind blowing, you know. Well, you, you know, it's crazy that, that you bring up that particular movie, which is one of my favorite movies mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in, two, was it 2009? 2009, my, my wife took me and my kids for Father's Day because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Venice Beach guy. Oh, well, man. when they shot the movie, they didn't shoot the, the, the movies. They didn't shoot the basketball scenes where they normally play basketball. At. Oh, they right. right. He said something other, about that. They created a whole other basketball court area to shoot because the Cadillac is called. I think it's called the Cadillac Hotel, which was right behind them. I stayed in that hotel, so it was like my <laughs> wife, uh, you know, Father's Day gift from my wife, and uh, yeah, it was you know, uh, it was cool. a big. It was cool, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, I, I, yeah, you know when you see these locations and you go, what? They, they took the photo right there, and then and, the, and then you see like you go, you sit there and you think like, wow whoever the artist was, whoever that photographer was and how they were able to capture yep. that. And, and then you look, you stand in there and you go, Oh, it doesn't look like what I saw in the photograph, you know, but that's, you know, that's them knowing what to do with yeah, the that, camera. Yeah. That's why they're professionals, right? It's, it's pretty crazy. Yes, sir. When you, when you think now of how social media is, uh, my buddy, Sean, he has an account called all about Los Angeles and he goes and he, he, He's worked at, he doesn't really talk about it, but he's worked at Disney a long time. So he knows a lot of the Disney lineage where Walt Disney was standing. And he kind of re, not recreates the photo, but he stands at the same spot. It might be JFK, it might be, you know, any, you know, um, 
uh, Rita Hayworth, you know, all these famous, you know, uh, different Hollywood folks and whatnot. But when you think about how far stuff's come and so, some of the stuff that you do in your day to day jobs, does it ever just blow your mind at how connected the world is? Uh, yes. I think <laughs> about that a lot. I think about the, the people that I've met online that I would have never met in person. You know, like, I mean, the fact that you and I are on the phone, oh, like, right. there's just, there's no way in hell we would have ever, <laughs> like, crossed, you know, you would never cross paths. Like, there's, like, how, how are we supposed to connect? So, I, I in a, and in a lot of great ways, social media is fantastic. In a lot of bad ways, social media is fantastic. Right, you know? right. Yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, I think what it does it, uh, with social media, it allows you to build your tribe, right? Because, mm-hmm get people who like they like the same things you like and you you know and and it, it, you know it's just it's it's made the world smaller but also you know it's also made the world even more divided in, yes. in its own you yep. know and it is what it is but you know shit if we can all you know put on the chronic and crack a beer and have a good time <laughs> fuck it, let's do that <laughs> i know Dude, I, I was going to YouTube and watch those old St. Ives commercials. I know, you know, a lot of that was branding and stuff, but like the, you know, the the Warren G and Nate Dog one, and there were just so many different ones. And you think back to that era and say, man, in many ways, I kind of go, man, I'm lucky to have grown up in an era that I love so much, you know, because a lot of kids even these days go, man, I kind of wish I was a '90s kid, you know, or whatever. But hey, um, man, the '90s, the '80s, I, the '80s and the '90s, man, I I just think they were like some of the best time ever i didn't realize it at the time yes me neither when, when when i go when i think back on it like there was it was it was it was ex, there was an excitement of we knew the future was coming like we knew <laughs> that the change was going to come we got to experience because you know like i'm one of those kids i was a first grader i used to walk home and open the door myself and let myself in and cook my own food i was a first grader like oh key kid you know um and so and, and, and you know i had to learn how to like take care of myself really young and you know now these kids like it's just different right it's just it's like a different way of thinking and but i got to experience the transition of no technology in our in our environment or very little mm-hmm. to where it's everywhere now right and i've got to experience all of that. And it's been, it's been a great transition. And I'm excited to see like what new things are going to come, like what new, you know, what new ways will we be able to photograph or take video of? And like, I mean, I think about this. Okay. You know how, you know, like all these outtakes you're talking, you're talking about, they're throwing away all this film and stuff. Well, guess what? This, this, this shit is in the cloud now. Yeah. So, you know, imagine your life now, like when we're long gone, like, yo, it's preserved. It's it's I like me personally, all my stuff is in the cloud for my family. Yep, yep. Everything, it's categorized. Everything is duplicated and copied. Like my kids, my grandchildren, my great great grandchildren, like they'll be able to watch a video of me in, in pretty damn good quality and go, Oh, it's, there's you know, there's great granddad, you know, you know, so the the technology now, um, because I'll tell you what, man, what I what what I would give to have video of people from 30 years ago that i i don't see anymore i know like, you, know, you know what i'm saying like so um i you know I, i'm just i feel like i'm kind of blessed that I, i'm you know in this 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 time and place with technology that you know we can link up because you watch a video where i'm mourning you really watch the video of me mourning my mother and me trying to deal with the loss of my mom and so my, the first thought was well i'll just vlog every day i just randomly said this is yeah. what i'm gonna do keep your mind you on know? things that you enjoy that will keep your mind off other things yes and daniel just happens to come over one day yeah right like no way no way in the world when i shot that video that day that i think oh yeah a couple of years from now i'm gonna be on the phone with jason we're gonna be talking about you know the the chronic right well and I mean, I wasn't going to bring this up, but it was like five years ago today I lost my dad. You know what I mean? Oh, and, man. Sorry, and, man. you know, I appreciate that. And, you know, it's like, you know, we all deal with things differently. But I wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying because 
one reason why I go so hard with the things that I do love is it keeps my mind off of like, my dad's not here. You know what I mean? Uh, I know he's not, but like I have a way to block things out of my head. You know, if I don't want to, you know, if I don't want to, you know, watch a particular social media, you know, you can unfollow it. Well, I can unfollow things in my head and just go, look, maybe they didn't happen. You know what I mean? And if I focus on the stuff I love or the stuff my family loves, I kind of feel like I can get ahead of it, you know? Yeah, man. So yeah. I mean, you know, thanks for watching me go through <laughs> my transition uh, because look at where it led you. It led you to the source, you yeah, know, man. And, so it, it I'm did. excited for you when you finally get to hook up with Daniel and, and, you know, have your conversation with him. Like, it'll be a, it'll be a really like mind blowing kind of conversation, like really get deep into the way he thinks and how he does things, man. Cause he's a, he's a really, he's a really brilliant dude. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Now, one thing I wanted to kind of highlight is Michael Gilbert Lopez. We're talking to Michael Lopez, Gilbert Lopez. Now, when I go on michaelgilbertlopez.com, your website, and I go to motion or I go to my work, I can scroll left or right. And I see like just a plethora of different kind of photos that you take. I'm just kind of curious, like in your day-to-day business, right? Do you guys, do you actively look for business or does business come in through different leads? Is that how you have such a, a wide array of, of work that you have on your website? Yeah, man. Uh, mainly most people find me word of mouth. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and if you find, if, if you can get people to vouch for you word of mouth, yep. like it's far more valuable than me running ads or anything like that. So, you know, I, um, I've just been blessed to, to, to be in the right places. And, 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 and I have this thing where I, I you know, look, you don't have to be a, a, you don't have to be great at anything. Like you, you, you can just be okay. But what you do have to be great at is you have to be great at answering the phone. You have to be great at re- replying to an email. Following and re- up. But like, like 90% of my business is because I reply to them or I call them back. Like, that's really what it is. It's not, I, I, I'm okay. I'm an okay photographer. I'm, I still, I still, you know, I have my, my, my photo heroes that I wish I could be like them, but I, and I'm still striving to be like them. But 90% of my business is because I, I just pick up the damn phone. Um, when people have a problem, they're looking for someone to help solve their problem because if they could solve it themselves, they wouldn't be out looking for anybody else. So, I help solve people's problems. They, they, they need to be able to communicate something, whether that's with vo- uh, photos or video or, you know, I still dabble sometimes with web development. They, they have a communication problem. They know I, I can solve it for them, and they know that they can trust that I'm going to get it done. Oh, yeah. Right? And that's why Vanilla Ice was so successful. If you have a problem, yo, he'll solve it. Check out the hook. Why my DJ revolves it. Just joking. But, <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, this is something that I, I wholeheartedly agree with because I worked for a company for 20 years where we prided ourselves on uh, following through, right? That first call resolution, all of that stuff, right? All the way to headquarters. And I think that's something that oftentimes, you know, how often do you call the company and they're like, oh yeah, no problem, man, we got you. Let me just look into this and you never hear back, right? And you lose yeah. trust in said, in said company. I went to a I went to a drive-thru this morning, you know, a place I go to all the time here, and it was like just not a good, it was just not a good experience. It just really wasn't. It left a sour taste in my mouth. I was like, yo, look, just just c- come through, and if you make a mistake, just be like, apologize, and let's move on, you know? But when companies yeah. can't do the basics, like you said, certain folks will lose business, and then they come over to someone like you that can follow up with them. Yeah, and I'll get the job done. I, I'll get it done you know, on time and budget. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I just believe in, you know, doing what you love. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, I, I get one shot at this thing called life. That's it. And once it's over, it's over. And I don't get a chance to go, Hey, you know, I think, I think I want to go back and try. I want to jump. Can we jump back? Can you take me back to when I was 30? I want to start this over again. <laughs> I feel like, you know, like, no, it's, it's over. So it's like, you know, I, I just wake up every morning and go, okay, I woke up today, God. What what can I do today? I and I just it. take one small step to moving forward because I know that over a period of time, a bunch of small steps becomes one gigantic step. You know, yeah. and, and that's where we got the famous words: "One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind." Right on the moon. Yeah, 
And I yeah. always think of that and say, wow, if you could just apply that somehow to your own life, right? Just incrementally, yep. something I've always preached to people because I, I came from the tech world, you know, iPhone, everyone's like, well, you know, they're going to come out with a virtual keyboard and they're going to have this. And I was like, look, Apple is the master at incrementally getting better a little bit each year. If they would have put out the iPhone 14, 14 years ago or 10 or whatever, you know, 2008, 2009, they wouldn't be where they are today because they have to incrementally get better, right? You give people a little bit more, a little bit more. And that, I always try to go, yo, if I can get incrementally better, maybe with the podcast each week or just in life, dude, Yeah, I, I'm moving ahead. My dad would always say, moving ahead, moving ahead. Let's move ahead a little bit, you know? Let's move ahead a little bit. Your dad was right. Move ahead just a little bit. doesn't have to be a lot. You know, I always tell everybody, how do you eat an elephant? That's a question I always ask everyone. <laughs> and I get all kinds of responses. Oh, I don't know with a fork. Uh, <laughs> and, do it. and I go, one bite at a time. That's how you eat an elephant. Oh, that right? brings me back to Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. I can't watch some of those scenes where they're eating that and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> If you go on YouTube, you can look up Vlog with Mike. However, as I've said, guys, if you check out the chronic video I did, I do have a link to his video in the description. You can um, uh, you can subscribe there, and you can go on michaelgilbertlopez.com. We have a lot of folks in California that listen, and if you guys need maybe some photography work or something, you can click contact there, and you can contact Michael and kind of chat with him. Um, yeah. In 2022, right, with the state of where hip-hop is and the way things are, um, you know, what are some things that you're into, like maybe nowadays, uh, besides golf? I know you mentioned that, and I think that's a cool thing. I know Scarface from Ghetto Boys, he's really in the golf, and that blew my mind years ago learning that, and I think that's great. Uh, what are there any other things besides the family stuff and the church stuff you do that you're really into, Michael? Man, you know what? Um, to be honest with you, right now it's been golf. Like I said, I started a golf company. It's called uh, Clubs and Holes. Wow. And uh, I, my tagline is we do it for the holes. And, and basically w the goal behind it is I want to introduce golf to the hip hop community. Like you said, you blew your mind was blown that Scarface would play golf, right? Like, Brad Jordan, I think, yep. uh, yeah, you know, I, I think of a lot, uh, a lot more, um, people would try it. I think, you know, the, the, the idea behind it has always been, oh, it's, you know, it's an elitist, it's stuffy, but, uh, man, we get out there and, Yo, we got we got the chronic album playing. We're smoking there cigars, we're drinking, we're drinking a beer, or drinking whatever you know, of Coke and Jack, and my man, we're, we're trying to hit the ball, and we're just having, uh, you know, we're having a good time, and it's not, it's not the way you think it is, and uh, so I'm, I'm my job there right now is just, I'm, I'm, that's really all I'm focused on is uh, clubs and holes, and and uh, introducing the game of golf to a whole new generation of hip hop. Uh, heads that never thought about playing golf before. Yeah, and how amazing is it? Sometimes it's just that gateway, right? It's other people that are into it. Uh, when I was in California, we have this link. There's a Lincoln crew called the Raddies, and they kind of they kind of spun off from another couple crews. But there was this dude, African American gentleman that came from Houston, and he and uh -huh. I connected. Man, we were talking about. I was like, "Yo, man," I said, "I'm going to break down some stuff to you. I know my Houston rap." We start talking about Big Mike and all these guys, and he goes, "Man, you're all right, man." And we started talking and. And it was cool how we connected. And sometimes, like, you know, he was he was out there with his family because he likes Lincolns. You know what I mean? And he doesn't yeah. know all these guys, the raddies and all that. And you think about the term, you know, rat. No one wants to be a rat. We know that. But the raddies, it's like, you know, they're they're helping bridge and bring people together, right? Because that's, that's what's most important, I think, in a lot of pieces of life. And that's what you're doing. And that sounds freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. Just, you know, trying to introduce it to, to like, a... a uh, a new group of guys, women that have never, uh, you know, never, um, you know, done, you know, played golf or anything like that. And just trying to, uh, you know, have some fun while I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Just a couple more minutes of your time. One thing that I thought about, and I wanted to mention this earlier, if you think about hip hop, where it's at, when I was younger in the eighties, kind of coming out of the Will Smith stuff, you know, a little bit of Eric B rock him, you know, the stuff that I really started finding, my way with Daz effects and things I remember. And I know, you know, the song, you know, hieroglyphics, uh, 93 to infinity. That was one of the first yeah. compact disc CDs I ever bought. And I thought to myself, you know, that's a cool thing too. Like if you look at hieroglyphics and some of the other crews that came out of California, it wasn't all gangster rap. 
And mm-hmm. that's the cool thing. Like you can listen to East to West and you can find your footing. Are there any other like albums or, or, or particular groups or anyone that, that, that come to mind that, that, you know, East or West that you really like? Uh, you know, I was a big Wu Tang fan. Loved oh, the yeah. Wu Tang. Let me see. Uh, a tribe called Quest. I oh, love the. Tri- yeah. You know, E Forty. I love E Forty. You know, Too Short. <laughs> I love oh them. yeah. Love them for Too Short. You know, grew up with some Too Short. Uh, you know, I kind of uh, I, I like to listen to a like a, a a variety of everything. There was nothing really that was off the table for me. Um, as long as it sounded good and. Um, I, you know, I just, I enjoyed it. It didn't, there was nothing, I can't say there wasn't anyone that I did not listen to. Uh, you know, I lived in the record stores. Oh yeah. I, I remember on Tuesdays. Week, I, <laughs> on Tuesdays, man, Tuesdays, man. I'm like, yo, when is, yo, what's, oh man, but they had to push it back a week. Come on, man. It was supposed to release today. You know, right, like, right. Yep. um, you know, I knew everybody at tower records. I knew everybody at Sam goodies, you know? Um, so, um, even down in LA, Amoeba Music, uh, like, and you know, I I just spent a lot of time there, and, and music is is kind of like the backdrop of my life. And although my musical taste has changed as I've gotten older, and oh, yeah. I've introduced more jazz and, and different types of you know dance music Melodic into my and stuff. Yep. Yeah, uh, you know stuff. You know, a lot of people hated that new Drake album that came out, but like for me, I was like, I put it in the background. I was like, oh man, this is perfect. I got all kinds of work done. You know, like there was, you know, um, it didn't bother me because I didn't, I didn't listen to it like it was supposed to be some kind of great hip hop album. But you know, but yeah, I, and people I don't realize stuff. sometimes that artists change. Like even Outkast. I mean, we all love Outkast, but it, you know, yes. Andre Three Thousand kind of. You know, he changed the styles, and I forget if it was them. It was like, if you want my old stuff, buy my old album. You know, yeah. And, and it's kind of like people do change, and people don't realize that. And kind of the reason why I asked that too is, if you think about this, if you look back, you nail that. You know, on Tuesdays now it's Fridays for new music, but think about now. Like I can go back and I can go, oh yeah, I remember this one album, man. I could never afford to buy it, and I'll go on Spotify or Apple Music, and it's it's almost guaranteed I can find it, right? So yeah. the the way we consume music now, I mean, imagine if we were younger and someone said for 10 bucks a month, you may not have it, but you'll come up with 10 bucks a month and you can listen to unlimited music and you'd be like, yo, I just bought this cassette for eight bucks. It's like, well, yeah, you can, it, like, it's mind blowing to me that it's all on our phone, man. Well, you know, what's crazy too. And I, I'm, I, I don't mean to get long winded here, but like you and I, so we grew up in that era where we had to go down to the record store we were looking, we were trying to find, yo, who's this new person? And we were all making decisions based on album covers. Yes, a we lot of looking it was. At album cover, and we're like, it's 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 a crapshoot. Yo, this is a dope album cover. I hope it sounds good. I don't know. Who I, <laughs> you know what I'm yep, saying? Yeah, yeah. And and and, um, and so like now, and and like even like today. Someone, I, I was, uh, I was on TikTok, and there's a guy named, uh, I think it's Toxic Sludge, and he 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 brings out like old records and he plays them, so you can figure out who sampled the record. Yeah, and so, yep. so today's artist was Baby Huey. Now, when I was younger, my uncle used to call me Baby Huey. I never knew who the hell he was talking about, and today, Baby Huey's on on tiktok and i'm like oh man i can't remember who sampled this song but someone in hip-hop samplers so what did i do i look it up on my apple music oh there it is and when i worked out today i listened to the whole album Boom. i would have never have found that record if it wasn't for this guy toxic sludge on tiktok and the the ability to find New music, it's new, it's new to me. Although the record was released in 1971, it's new to me because I've never heard it before. Yep. Yeah, there's so many out there, and I encourage people to listen to different forms of music again because I watch a lot of the same stuff you do on YouTube where guys are like, Yo, you know, Dre didn't sample a lot for 2001, but let's go through them. And the other day, literally, I was doing it, I was looking it up, going, Damn, that original joint was, was fire, you know, and I had to listen to it, so yeah. I, I added into my sample deals, but. Um, last subject, um, you mentioned Pasadena earlier and I thought about, you know, this kind of ties together a lot of the social media stuff. Some of the guys I watch on YouTube, Adam, the woo grim life, you know, different guys that do this pop culture stuff. I never realized. So you think about like coming down with album covers, right? So when we were younger, Nirvana comes out, they got the naked Mm -hmm. baby on their album cover. I always thought it was kind of weird, but I was like, ah, whatever big album. 
that pool that they took the the baby photo in, which that guy has since had lawsuits against Nirvana, which I'm like, how does this happen? But yeah. the, the the naked baby photo was taken in a Pasadena pool, and people have documented that exact side of the pool where it was taken. It's like, isn't that insane <laughs> what people can figure out these days? Yeah, and, and it's crazy because like you got to think about it. So like you can geotag you know photos now, right? Yep, yep. You, or with your iPhone, like you take a photo with your iPhone or your Android, but like it geotags, right? Yep. But like you know this is on film, so the only way you're gonna be able to find is like you got to really do some research. Yep. Like there's you know so when people can you know find stuff like that, like yeah, I just find it's just it's it's pretty freaking amazing, you know? Yeah, it it is mind blowing and. If the other day I watched, I forget what it's called on Netflix. They have this like really kind of easily digestible. I think it's uh, two seasons, and they're like twenty minute episodes, and it talks about technology and and the way the world works now. And I was in season two, and it was like episode one or two, and they were talking about GPS and how it how it originally they they figured it out in like the fifties because of the Sputnik. When yeah. Russia launched that, these guys in America figured out they could they could do all this math and figure out they, they could measure the signals. So long story short, so the GPS goes back to the 50s. Well, then it really starts coming out in the in the 80s and 90s. But uh, the U.S. would scramble it a little bit, and I mean they're on the record saying that because it was like a military type thing, right? But I yeah. say all that because if you think about like what you just said a minute ago with GPS and stuff how far that's advanced us, right? Being able to go and, 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 and pin places. You know, these guys pin all these different locations on Google uh, and whatnot. It's just mind-blowing to me that, you know, technology may have started 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago almost, but it takes a while when it gets out. But once it does and it's it's on, you know, think about your iPhone, how much you can do on it, right? Um, it, yeah. It's just, it, to me, you just go, wow, like if you would have went back 50 years, you know, like like the like in a movie or a TV show and showed people what we have, they would be like, dude, this is, this is insane. Yeah. I, and, and I think lots of technology, it, I think it's available. I think it's ready. I just think that we're not ready for it. Right. Right. Like drones, <laughs> even think about drones. Like you were talking about earlier, like what's, what's going to trans, you know, tr- you know, really transform how we take photos and stuff. I mean, drones have kind of done it, but we're going to see more and more. That's just going to be mind blowing. Oh yeah. AI. Oh, AI is, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can go deep into this conversation, you know, but you know, just talking about like take the iPhone 14 and, you know, the other day, my friend just got the 14. I, I hadn't used it yet. And we were on the golf course and he had it in cinematic mode. And I was like, wow, yeah, I don't, what, I don't even need to bring out my big camera. <laughs> like, you know, like it does such a good job. Like there's no reason for me to pull out my big cameras to achieve the same thing that this phone is doing right here in front of my face yeah and, and apple you know? just incrementally gets better like i said earlier and like even me like i've always you know had a grow grow pro on me you know but it's like yeah. now it's like apple's like oh, okay the 14 we've got you know better stabilization you don't need a gopro and it's just like damn before you know it it's going to be like making your food for you you know it's like dang man but um yeah yeah it's 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 crazy but you still got to be a great artist you want to create great images or and things like that you still have to know how to use light composition you know c- capturing a moment capturing yeah. feeling that still takes someone that ha- they have to know what they're doing behind the camera yeah and if if anybody is like no i don't believe that listen uh, i've had a couple buddies and it happened to me go buy a gimbal for your phone right you see all these cool mm-hmm. videos and you're like oh man like dude i'm gonna be ma- making like movies and stuff go get the dji gimbal if you've got an older iphone right it's not as easy as it looks. You know, I can move the little knob, right? I can almost do better just with the iPhone now, but trying to move that thing around and get all the motion so they're fluid, the, 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 the DJI deal, the gimbal holds it. But you, like you said, you still have to kind of craft what you're trying to attempt to do to make it that good, you know, content. You, you ever seen the movie Waterworld? With yes. The Kevin Costner? Yep. Okay. Yep. That movie cost like at the time, it was like $150 million or something, I remember. right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, doesn't matter. You can. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you can't tell a story, if you can't capture something, <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah. If you can spend all the money you want, it's gonna suck, right? Because you did. You did whatever that the thing that makes it, it the thing. You know, like 
it's it's not like um what's the what's the uh hip hop artist the the mad villain um MF Doom oh, right? right he's got the classic album with that when he's got the mask on right yep and when I was in New York they had the the this video playing where the photographer talked about how they literally went outside for like two three minutes and it was the last frame and it was the last frame that he took and for whatever reason he moved this just a slight way that kind of gave it this mysterious look all the rest you you saw all the rest of the photos and you're like oh they're not they don't look the same but because he did a little thing with the camera just to slightly move it it kind of blurred it just a little bit but kept it focused on the eyes just enough and that ended up becoming like this classic poster that even my son has up on his wall like and why because it still took someone it still took an artist behind there to to capture it it didn't yep. matter what's in front it still takes it still takes an artist it's yep. not it didn't happen know. on its own yeah and rest in peace a lot of people didn't know this I don't follow Mr. Doom as, as close as some people do, but he passed away on, on October 31st, 2020. And I had read something that, that said that people didn't even know that he had passed for like six months or something. There was some weird uh, yeah, thing, yeah, th- thing about that. Yeah, I remember, well, his family had posted it on, in, on Instagram because I followed on my Instagram. So that's how. Yeah, it was. I, I it was something like that, but yeah, you know, like I, I would say, you know, I really appreciate, you know, and if Daniel ends up listening to this, like much respect to you and your mentor and, you know, your friend, your homie, you know, you're out there doing things and spreading good stuff with golf and, and all the other stuff and Daniel's help, you know, maybe you along the way, but like for you guys to like help me just in this, I'll call it a little journey, right? I mean, I got this stuff stuck in my head as us growing up here in Florida we would watch and we would put a VHS tape in. We would watch, you know, today was a good day. Cube, Easy E, yeah. rolling on my six foe, Dre, let me ride, G thing. And we would see these low riders. And that had a big, um, it had a big impression, or it, it was a big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it kind of really impacted us, right? It on how exactly influenced, thank you. It really influenced us in this lifestyle we called our lifestyle podcast. Because we're into mini trucks and stuff, but dude, any of us will jump in a low rider with dr- hydros. My buddy's got a '68 Lincoln with hydros, wire wheels. Like, it's really a piece of like Americana, but it's also yeah. a part of the pop culture stuff. Everything from that era, as you know, like Boys in the Hood, watching Menace to Society, all these movies with these classic cars. But now we are where we are, and we're still kind of going back and finding these little tidbits. And if it wasn't for you, Daniel Jordan, I mentioned even his wife the other night when I was on the phone with them a couple weeks ago. Thank you, guys, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm, I'm glad we're able to, you know, help you and, you know, help you uh, with your quest on, you know, Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. I'm going to find out some more tidbits, I'm sure. But listen, next time in, I'm in Cali which I will be probably the next year or so. I'm going to look you up. Maybe we could get a drink. Uh, you'll yeah. meet up, get some food or something. But, dude, I mean, from OLP, we call it, I call it the OLP-verse now. From the OLP-verse, um, you know, to you guys, much love and respect. I'd love to keep in contact with you. Uh, you know, you've said a lot of great things, and uh, I look forward yeah. to, to linking up with you again, my friend. Anything else you want to share? No, man, I, 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 I'm, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm You know, like I said, I – the, when you the vlog that you watched, you know I didn't care. If no one watched it. it I, I made them for myself. I just said I'll just share them with the world. And whoever watches watches, and whoever likes it likes it, and whoever doesn't, well, oh well. I, this is <laughs> this is me just going through my life right now. And uh, so the fact that you watched it and it was something of interest and something that uh, helped you with with answers that you were looking for, like. It did its job, and that, that's satisfying enough to me. You know, like it, it did what it's supposed to do. So, no, thank you for uh, for reaching out, and and uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to hook you up with Daniel. And I'm sure when you when you get him on, man, like it'll be some, it'll be a really good conversation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll let you guys do what you want to do if if that's what ends up happening. So no problem there, no pressure. Um, I do want to say rest in peace to your mom. I, I tried to get that oh. in earlier. Um, you know, it's weird how the universe works, but you know, by you doing the video, I saw it and it linked us up, linked Daniel up as well. But you know, much love and respect to you, Michael Gilbert Lopez, check them out. If you're in Cali and you need some photography work, or maybe, you know, um, you know, your company does, you know, link them up with Michael Gilbert Lopez, uh, dot com 
And uh, Michael, we wish you all the success the rest of this year as we get, uh, I guess, sideways, spinning out, peeling out into 2023, my friend. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, Jay. I appreciate you. Be good, brother. Have a good night. All right. Take care, brother. Thank you.